We were talking about the coefficient of restitution, which really is a fancy way of talking about the law of conservation of energy. So here I've got a big black bouncy ball, and I'm going to drop it from 100 centimeters in the air. So it's got a certain kind of amount of potential energy here. To know the potential, I have to know the mass of this ball. But for what we're doing, I don't really have, we'll see, we don't have to know the exact mass just to find out what we're doing. But to find the potential would be the MGH, and the H is 100 now. So watch what happens after one bounce. The one bounce, it bounces to about the 80 centimeters. So if we, we clearly have less potential energy here than we had at the top. We only have 80 out of the 100 that we had. And the reason I chose 100, it makes the efficiency rather easy, because efficiency is what you get out to what you put in. So the efficiency of the bounce is about 80%. It bounces up to 80 centimeters instead of the 100. If I were to have 100% efficiency, this ball would have to bounce clear up to the 100 mark where it started. So I'm losing about 20 centimeters, which represents, since I'm using 100 centimeters, I'm using, losing 20% of the energy. So, and if you want to find it's called the coefficient of restitution, it's just a ratio of those two heights. It's just the 80 over the 100 which is uh, 0.8 would be the coefficient of restitution. But in real terms, we like to talk about the conservation of energy. So I'm keeping 80% of the energy in the ball, but I'm clearly losing 20%. So now the question is, where, where is that missing 20%? How am I losing it? Got two other little balls here. Um, they're both made of the same elements, but they're vulcanized. It's a fancy name for how you, how you get the, 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 ad, the atoms to arrange themselves and bond together. And in one case, um, let's start with the, this ball. Start at the 100. Okay, not as efficient as the other one. That's about 63. So we're only keeping about 63. There's about 66 or so, 66% of the energy. So if I did this a bazillion times, 65, on average it might be around 65% of the energy we're keeping. Then it's um, not identical. Um, twin, but it's still it's twin, same mass, same everything else, yikes, that might have been a two or a one at best, one or two centimeters. That means, even though it's the same elements hitting the ground, it at best maybe bounced up two at the best, and that might be a little exaggeration. That means it's only 2% efficient at bounce, you know, coefficient of restitution of two divided by 100 or point zero two. So where's all that energy going? It has to be somewhere, okay? So where in the world is all that energy going to? You may have noticed it's a slightly different sound because when you make sound, you actually have to vibrate the air. That takes energy to vibrate the air. So we know that's a loss in energy. But the big loss of energy is in the squishiness of this, okay? In the squishiness of this ball, it keeps 63% of the energy but um, about the other third of the energy, on the squish, you don't get it all back. Even that experiment we did on the bungee thing the other day with the bungee on the scooters, the work I did in pulling that thing out, you don't get 100% of the energy back in reality. As you're stretching all the atoms and the molecules apart, you're storing elastic energy, but in real life, you don't get it back. Same thing in a bow and arrow. You, whatever work you do in pulling back that arrow on the bow, you don't really get 100% out. It breaks some uh, laws of physics. You can't get the same out as what you put in. You're always going to get less out. It's the law of conservation of energy. It's actually the second law of thermodynamics. Um, that you can't not only get more out of what you put in, you, you can't even break even. You're going to get less. And the reason is, when we're squishing molecules and unsquishing, we're making the molecules vibrate and around a little more. And that's the kinetic energy of the molecules. Well, I can't get all the kinetic energy back. In fact, in this case, I can't get hardly any of the energy back. So if I drop these a bazillion times today, which of these two would be warmer at the end of those bazillion drops? What would be this one? Because we're losing more of its, more of its energy under the smack. So gravity does work converting all that potential into kinetic energy, and right before it hits, it squishes. And then it unsquishes and shoves itself back up if it's 100% elastic. But this is only like 63% elastic. This one, only 2% elastic, loses most all of its energy. This one that we started with today, that's about 80%. It's a pretty good bouncer. It's about 80% efficient. So it keeps 80% of its energy in terms of potential energy or kinetic energy. Because 100% of that potential gets turned into kinetic right before it hits. But as it squishes and unsquishes, 
we get about 80% of the kinetic energy back, and that's why it goes up to about 80 centimeters. The reason I can say that's pretty true in the kinetic energy, there's not a lot of air drag on this at these kind of speeds. Plastic. Here's just a plastic ball. Now that's a little surprising for a plastic ball. That's about 87% efficient. So on this surface, we're keeping about 87, 88% of the energy within this thing. We're only losing about 12% of the energy. You might ask, well, because how does this plastic thing squish? Even plastic things, there's a squish to it. Not a lot of squish, but there is some amount of squish to it. And you may have noticed it's a little bit louder than some of the others. So we are losing some energy to sound, but there is some squish. So now all of that energy is going into the molecule to the ball. Some of that is the work done on the molecules on the floor. But if we were to change to a wood surface on the inside of the house, we'd find out it's not quite an efficient of a bounce on the inside because the floor um, actually dissipates a little bit more of that energy when it hits the floor. All right, so that's a quick little thing on the coefficient of restitution. Oh, one more thing, golf ball. Some of you like to golf. Um, how efficient is a golf ball when you smack it? You'd want it to be efficient. So all the work you do in squishing this thing, you want to unsquish and fly off the club head. Well, this ball is pretty good. It's like 85% efficient. So some golf balls may be better than others. Uh, that means that you get most of the energy right back out of the thing. We're getting around 85, 86% of their energy back. How about an old tennis ball? Now, this is an old one. They don't give me balls that are, that are fresh, the, the, um, the Latham North Tennis um, Company. The Latham North Tennis only give me their old balls. And at least, I don't know about new balls, but their old balls, look at that, that's pretty worthless, only 40% efficient. That's why they're giving me those balls for free, because they can't do much with them, because you're not, not even getting 40% of the energy back on these things. Okay, so that's, okay, guess why you gotta get new balls all the time, at least for the, for the tennis. All right, good enough for today on the uh, coefficient restitution and conservation of energy.